Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Guessman, coming to you live on Thursday, June 7th. From Corner of the Galaxy Studios, we have a great show planned for you today. Uh, LA Galaxy win the U.S. Open Cup game that they were in against an amateur team, and that's probably a good thing as we look forward. Uh, we'll also tell you when the U.S. Open Cup, the next one, is going to be played, and the LA Galaxy get ready to play their final league game before they go break for the World Cup, so we're going to talk about that as well. And uh, here to help me out. He drove all the way here in the studio. He was going to wear his, his new Galaxy jersey. <laughs> But uh, apparently there was some sizing issue. Yeah. Some good sizing good issues. Si- would, it's a good I, I thing, say. yeah. But Mr. Uh, Mr. Eric Beer, the Portuguese hammer in the house after, I should say, taking a picture with Joao Pedro last yes. night. Yes, you know, I got a picture with Cosmo, picture with Zhuang, so I am a happy man today. Which one do you value more there? Uh, you know what? It's like your kids. You, you never say which one you love more. But Even but though you really do, do secretly have one and it's Cosmo. But still, right. you, you know. You don't want to say you it. You don't want to say it out loud. But yeah, thank, like, I'm glad I got the G2 call up to this Open Cup uh, podcast. Today. Yes, yes. The, the GJ <laughs> Eric was there uh, for uh, for the U.S. Open Cup match played at the uh, track and field stadium, the LA Galaxy winning 3-1 to one over FC Golden State Force, which is a lot of words for <laughs> a uh, a team that was fun, actually. Yeah. Well, I think their fans were more fun than the team, yeah. but still. They were excited. They were happy to be there. And for that, I applaud them. I apply. They were loud. Yes. They were raucous. Uh, they made me chuckle. Yeah, I, it's what you want. It's it, what you want from an amateur opponent. It was it was all the things that I wanted. Uh, actually, it was all the things I wanted from a U.S. Open Cup match. It yeah. was it was good and maybe yeah. close to forty five hundred five thousand people there. Yeah, I that's thought what it, I would I would guess about five thousand. So. Yeah, and the the atmosphere at, at these games is a lot of fun. And, and the part that I like about a U.S. Open Cup game is you get the Galaxy fans who want L.A. Galaxy soccer directly into their veins you get the no one you know you're not getting a straggler coming on a wednesday night to the track and field stadium you're you're, you're getting the diehards which is it's cool you don't drag a newbie to yeah. that game right you're well, not like, I, I did oh wait that's right you did yeah, and he had, he had a good he, he time he enjoyed himself yeah that's, yeah we'll talk about that well, well there was one of the reasons he probably did enjoy himself is one of the most complete galaxy games i think we've seen all season <laughs> now granted against an amateur team from whittier and was this really the la galaxy yeah, I mean, would you call this? Maybe the they team? should be. Maybe yeah. they should be. I don't. I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about that lineup and and some of the things that we pulled away from that. Also, getting you ready for the LA Galaxy's game against Real Salt Lake coming up on Saturday. That's a seven thirty p.m. kickoff time. Uh, RSL on the way up, looking a little dangerous. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and maybe there's been some parties down in Mexico that Gio <laughs> and Jonah maybe got in a little trouble for. It's a family show, Josh. Yeah, be just, careful. I was going to say careful. there was some paid companionship. We're going to talk a little <laughs> bit about that as well. And and whether or not we think that affects the galaxy, affects anything. The PR machine slows down any, I don't know, lots of things. Our question of the day, or questions oh, of wow, the day. I yes. didn't know we, that, was, that was a bit. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I thought that was for the Monday I show. Was, I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I try. I try. Um, it's the same questions we had last week, okay. but it was I didn't get to any of them, so it was one of those. Uh, so your questions of the day is, uh, there's two of them. You can change one thing about the LA Galaxy. So you can change one thing. That's one question. And then the other question is, is... What is your most unpopular LA Galaxy opinion? Things that would oh, go so so okay. these are, these are the things that we're thinking about whenever whenever we're doing this. So if you have those and you're in the chat room, feel free to do it. If you're listening to us on the podcast, pull over out of traffic. It's probably only going two miles an hour anyway. <laughs> you can go off to the side of the shoulder and you can type in your questions to Twitter Perfect. and stuff like that. We'll retweet some I, safety first. Nice. I, I, of I course. Imagine. Um, but anyway, so let's start with the U.S. Open Cup game. The Galaxy faced off against FC Golden State Force. This is a premier development league team, a PDL team. Uh, it's an so would you say it's FC Golden State Force, PDL, PDL yes, FC? FC, <laughs> extra, extra. Um, no, it, so the, the idea in the PDL is that these are amateur players. I'm going to say, and I have no proof of this, but reading about FC Golden State Forest, they had a, a couple of Brazilians, so I think one, two, or three Brazilians that were on the team, and the coach was always a little fuzzy with how much, per, how <laughs> how much amateur exper- were they? experience they've had. Yeah. You know, oh, how, you know, how, how high a level did they play in, in yeah. Brazil? Oh, you know, pretty good level. You know, yeah. it was one of those. It's like, yeah. uh-huh, okay. And I think that that happens with, with these amateur sides, and uh, even some of the men's league stuff that, that I've been involved with. Whenever you're in a cup game... It, 
he always tried to bring his, a, a few ringers in, try to get things done. So it's not it's not unheard of. So, you know, I applaud them. You find out you're going to play the Galaxy. If these guys have legit been on the team and, and maybe it's to keep an amateur status, Right. Y- you got to be a little fuzzy. You got to do what you got to do. And maybe you're playing against an MLS side. This is a big deal. So maybe you, wanna, you don't want to embarrass yourself. So you need to bolster. You need to bolster. And again, pure speculation. For- I'm just, you know, going off of what, Josh Gessman says, yes. so because he said it. Yeah, you can't uh, get sued? Is that what it is? <laughs> views, views are my own. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, listen, I, I want to get – the chat room has already started with some of their unpopular opinions. Like nice. the, the So I'm going to give you a couple of those just okay. to sort of to get everything. Um, one listener – the, the screen names to me are just – they're gold. It's they're, the internet. They're, they're too hard. They're too hard. <laughs> I'm trying to put them together. Uh, John Cena Dupont. Uh, He's a regular. I like Pina- that. Yeah, Cena. Pinedo did nothing wrong. That is his unpopular LA Galaxy opinion. Ooh, is I, that unpopular? Yeah. Yes, it is unpopular. <laughs> I mean, I, in my opinion, the man quit yeah. on the team. He was one of those. He was He's like, he was like the cash. Yeah, exactly. But chasing the cash the wrong way. He just got a raise, yeah. and then he wanted another raise. I like it. I like it though. Um, so that that's good. Um, let's see. One of the other ones was. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, unpopular Galaxy opinion. Uh, this is Pimas, uh, and this person says, "Unpopular Galaxy opinion shouldn't have gotten rid of Rafa Garcia." Wow. Okay. I never had a problem with keeping Rafa Garcia. Yeah, I, I liked him, but at the same time, he was sort of trapped between a USL or Division well, Two and Division One. I think, and I think the LA Galaxy two have have produced a few of those guys. That you know, I think they call them quadruple A players in baseball, where they're too good for the amateurs, but they can't quite make the show. I think we we've seen a few guys who, you know, they shouldn't be USL guys. They're, they're the talent level is above that. But for when it comes to MLS, for some reason, you know, there seems to be struggles there. But Rafa Garcia, I don't think he. You know, he was put in a tough position last year with what he was asked to do, and I don't. I think he he did a serviceable job. I mean, I don't think he's going to make any All Star teams or or bolster this squad, but he definitely wouldn't have hurt being on this roster. So I could I could picture that. Do you, you want to hear my um one of my unpopular LA Galaxy opinions? Let's hear it. Okay, first of all, you have to understand one of these I believe to be a hundred percent truth, and there's nobody <laughs> who will ever be able to talk me out of it. And one of them is probably just more poke of the bear. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you decide which one is which. <laughs> um, the reason the LA Galaxy won the 2020 12 MLS Cup is because of Christian Wilhelmson. Yeah. That is my that is my utter <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just gonna tell yeah, you there, that is my utter belief. <laughs> all right. He comes in late it. in the season, just before the roster deadline. He plays a bunch of games. The guy can't score to save no. his life, but he was so fast, he opened up so much space, and you had to watch him. He was yeah. I'm yeah. on board with that. Yes, there we go. Christian Wilhelmson was the reason the LA Galaxy won the 2012 <laughs> MLS Cup. Uh, my other one is that the Club World Cup is a totally useless tournament. And for people in MLS to keep saying, like, it's a big deal if MLS ever gets there, most of the world falls asleep on it. Nobody cares about it. So it's not that big a deal. Now, of course, everybody has peppered me with quotes saying, well, Real Madrid said it was important. <laughs> yeah, because Real Madrid was going to win it and with their B they're... team. And then they also, you know, they could save their A team until yeah. the final. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and so I, I see where you're going there. I think the Club World Cup is only important to the cl- clubs that are in it. So if you're not in the Club World Cup, it doesn't matter. But if you're in the Club World Cup, of course it's a big deal. Wait, so wait. of course Real Madrid, that's they're going to claim. And so I don't know what that means, and I, I'm kind of dancing around my answer here. But it, it, if the Galaxy or an MLS side got there, yeah, they'd be would, very thrilled. It would be a bigger deal. Yeah, it'd be a big deal. Okay, so uh, basically, and I would probably be one of those people who'd be like, the, wor- the Club World Cup is a huge, <laughs> there's a whole podcast, why the Club World Cup is why, a big what deal. What this means to the What's club. We're going to get the special badge on our uniforms next season. I always say you're allowed to change your opinion, and you should change your yep. opinion. If facts come in that, that, that change that opinion. Of course, I could also flip-flop constantly, um, so that's not a big deal. But anyway, okay, so back to U.S. Open Cup. Uh, LA Galaxy and the starting lineup here. Only two quote-unquote starters start, and they're not even all-time starters because you had Daniel Starris who played on, uh, at center back. By the way, had a very nice game at yeah. center back because that's his position. <laughs> it's funny what happens when you play people in their position. He's not a right back. He's a center back. I mean, Dave Romney, you can play anywhere. See, I, th- I think we've learned that. I hope we've learned that lesson. Let me re- go back. I hope we've learned that lesson. It was also against an amateur team and mostly a, like a, a Division two. But yes, yeah. he, he yeah, played but fine. Still. Okay, and then you had um, you had Ima Boateng. So those were the end. And between those two, you have like 13 starts in the league this year. So um, seven and six. So pretty fairly yeah. uh, distributed. But Boateng is mostly a sub for Siggy Schmidt. Um, and Steris has been on the outs, except yeah. whenever they play FC Dallas. Apparently, he's, not he's the a right consistent back. center back. Yeah. No, no, he's not right now. Um, and I put Romney above him in terms of center back, maybe even right now too. I don't know. 
uh, maybe this is an unpopular opinion. Um, Dave Romney should be making way more money than he makes. Well, th- that's my unpopular opinion is Dave Romney should be striker. Yes. Oh, it's a strike. Yeah, because he, he did have a lot of <laughs> offensive clout last year. I, I agree. That might be a good thing. And and Josh Zardes should come back and play right back. That, that I disagree with. <laughs> that's unpopular for a reason. Ashley Cole is a better midfielder than he is a left back right now. A better Ooh. defensive midfielder than he is a left I can back. Give, I can get on board with that. I could see where it could be unpopular, but I could also see where it's coming from. I like that. These are good. These are these Shout are fun. Shout out to the chat room. Yeah, yeah. That, no, the that, that one was mine. Oh, just, okay. Sorry, no, they don't get no credit. No, well, chat room. <laughs> Pick it up. Yeah. Pick it up. Get it done. No, they're talking about bribing World Cup refs in here uh, okay. to make sure that Gio and Jonah have good good <laughs> well, Mexico. Yeah, think... when they, do they keep them there? That works. I like that. Um, so anyway, so you had those guys. Um, and then if you look at the starting lineup, you have Justin Von Stieg, who's been the backup and the number two to, um, to what's the guy's name? That one guy. <laughs> Not David Beckham. No, David, David Bingham. Bingham. There That's he is. the guy. Bingo. Oh, man. It's been a long week. Can you tell? <laughs> a lot of games. A lot of games. So uh, anyway, so to, to uh, David Bingham, um, you had Emmer Clementa at right back, who has been showing there as of yeah. I think we figured out why they're reticent to start him yeah, that, at right back right yeah that's that's a discussion I was actually having that today there was a and I don't know if we're supposed to talk LAFC here but that um I had a buddy who you know they were waiting for this LAFC player named Kovar why hasn't he played it was supposed to be a big deal he played in the open cup right. and they realized oh that's why he hasn't played yes so uh Emma Clemente we were saying why hasn't he played why hasn't he played he played and we said okay maybe maybe there's a reason why he hasn't hasn't been playing but he he is improving and the even as as down on him as I was, I think there's potential there, and he's gonna. You have to you, you have to learn from your failures and learn from your mistakes. So I think he's improving. I think I'm not he, writing. He, I'm not writing gonna, him off. I'm not writing him off. Yeah, he he has a spot on this team. There, he's a Montenegrin national team yeah. player. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. I mean, any international experience yeah. is international experience. Hey, if they want him. They see something. Cl- Clement Diop was an international player as well. So I he's mean, going, is he he's going to a World Cup? I believe is he is with I, uh, with uh, Senegal. So, I, believe I believe so. Yeah. I, he, oh man. World and the United athlete. States isn't in the, in, isn't in the <laughs> but in Clement World Cup. Da- Diop is. But Diop is. Oh, hey, what? A, good for him. Good, <laughs> good for him. That's what I say. Uh, he, so you had Clementa, you had Stares, you had Hilliard, Arce, which was good to see. He's just, he's never had a place anywhere they yeah. put Tomas Hilliard, Arce. He's just good, and he's out there yelling at people, mm. and he's trying to. He organize. was at home in this game. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. was fine. Wasn't out of it. Um, you had uh, John Roquejo. Now there were five players that got loaned up. God, the Galaxy waited till the last minute to announce this. <laughs> Basically, they announced the starting lineup with the five loans that were coming up. Just for, you know, comparison, the Sounders told everybody about their loans that morning. Okay, so you could do that, and it probably wasn't. I mean, were they afraid it's that... just eight hours, Josh. Come were, on. Were they afraid that the amateur team was going to gain some sort all of... the scouting on Ethan ooh, Zubak was going to get out. It was like, no, he was... Of course <laughs> he's going to play. Like, it's just all this stuff. And you, you had no idea whether or not they were going to start those guys. Yeah. But anyway, it was a big shrouded secret. Um, so uh, you got uh, John Roquejo left back. Uh, place for LA Galaxy 2 was loaned up to the senior team for this game. You had uh, your favorite man, Joao Pedro, number 88, number 58, number 8. he had eight. a solid game. He had a very solid game. Uh, you had uh, Julian uh, Boucher, who played a bunch with the LA Galaxy in the preseason. Everybody thought he was going to get signed to the mm-hmm. senior team along with Cato, and neither of those guys signed, <laughs> and Boucher ended up signing with he Galaxy stayed. 2. It was a smart move for him. I think there's probably room on this. Yeah, D- despite things, all the midfield, when, when things happen, yeah, and and people start to drop and yellow card warnings that we will probably talk about a little bit, late, little bit later, you can find your way into into this uh, into this at least the bench. And my friend Juan will tell you that. Yes, yes. You, actually, that's my unpopular opinion. What is and of course, yes. I'm the I'm the one who's saying it. Yeah. Is, Juan was not nearly as bad as people think he is. The man, I'm, I'm not going to say he's going to make you know an MLS All Star roster. I'm not saying he's the backbone of this team. I'm just saying he he doesn't deserve half the flack that he gets. Right. He deserves he deserves the other half of it, but not not the other not the other fifty percent. Uh, That's my hot take uh, from the guy wearing a Portugal shirt. I was, was going to say <laughs> totally unbiased take. Um, the dude got yellow carded and lost his shoe that's in under a minute. Though. That is, I mean, that's that's galaxy history. Yeah, and especially you know since I've been coming, we we play it up the, the Juan Pedro thing, but <laughs> but I, I root for him. I want him to do well. So well, yeah, when he came on, lost his shoe, got a yellow card. I'm like, really? This <laughs> my eggs are in the basket, so I'm going all in. I tend to like him a lot more than people I think yeah. generally like him. I think that he, he there's a there could still be a future for him yeah. on the galaxy. I don't think he was given a fair shake by Siggy necessarily, but maybe yes. he could 
he, he, needs know, to, he needed to get better. He can prove it. Yeah. I'll tell you this. There was, whenever there was talk about how they were going to bring on Zlatan Ibrahimovic and what international slot was going to be opened up and it ended up being Joao Pedro being yeah. lowed down to LA Galaxy 2, that's what did it. I was talking with somebody within the organization and I was trying to figure out how they were doing this before it happened. And if everybody remembers, Corner of the Galaxy broke the news that that's how it was going to go. Um, and so I was talking to somebody in the organization and they they were telling me that, hey, you know, Joel Pedro's probably going to go down to LA Galaxy too. I go, yeah, but you guys paid a ton of money for him in terms of transfer fee, right? And by the way, that number fluctuated anywhere between 650000 and like $1.7 million. The one point seven is probably more accurate. It might be three wow. payments of $650,000, which sort of gets you one seven, one eight, one eight five. Um That's so, interesting. So that's probably probably an accurate number somewhere in there. And so I, I said to this person, and, and credit to this person, they, they, it was the correct answer, and at least I think it's the correct answer. They said, it doesn't matter how much money people are making. It's about developing the player. He needs minutes. He needs to go down. He's not going to get the minutes up here with which the is fair. fame. Which is fair. And it's like, okay, good. Then get him minutes. Yep. And he has. He's been playing with Galaxy 2. He's been getting the minutes. And you've seen him back up with the senior team now that Rolf Felcher is on the uh, disabled list. So... Um, I think that was that was that was a good move for them. And in this particular case, uh, and let's finish out the lineup. You had yes. Ari Lasseter up top. Uh, you had Bradford Jameson uh, sitting slightly above uh, Joao Pedro and Julian Busher. You had Ima Boateng, as we said, out on the left wing, and you had Ethan Zubak who started up top. Here, here, here are my three stars of this game: were Joao Pedro, Julian Busher, and and Bradford Jameson. Yeah, that's... Um, and and that's in that triangle. And then Ima Boateng by himself because he did some amazing things yeah. in that game last it, night. Ima Boateng, you could tell, was the pro playing against the amateurs on the amateur field. He, he he showed himself above. And and you hit the nail on the head with Bradford Jameson. To me, I was excited to see him in the starting lineup. When I saw he was in the starting lineup, that excited me. Then he played well. He scored that beautiful curler to, to – uh, you know, to put it in the back of the net and get scoring again. So, you know, with everything that he's gone through with, you know, the concussions and, and the injuries and worrying about, you know, his playing career, to see him on the field, to see him get a goal, to see him play well, I think it really means a lot. And especially with last season, Siggy gave him some minutes at the end of last season, which tells you that Siggy sees him as a big part of this team. So to see him playing, to see him playing well, I think that's a great thing for the club once he gets you know back in fitness with the main team. Yeah, and, and Siggy Schmidt was, I think, going to rely on him at the beginning of the season, and obviously the concussion happened before it really preseason even started. That took him a while to come back from. I mean, it's still touch and go every time he's out there on the field, but it's, it's one of those things that if you can get minutes out of yeah. him, you need to play him because I think he's a player that has developed enough now to make an impact on the senior team. Um, he was also apparently dealing with some sort of um, a groin injury too, so he had that, and so now he's back from that. Uh, I was talking to his mom afterwards. I was walking to the parking lot, saw his mom, um, and she was telling me that he had had those issues. And I said, "Well, tell him to stay healthy because you know it, it's, <laughs> it's good to see him out <laughs> yeah. there." I mean, and that's the whole thing. He was a bright spot for sure. Yeah, he was, and so um, he played well. And Ari Lasseter got two goals. I mean, I'm tough on Ari Lasseter. All right, Siggy Schmidt was very complimentary of him after the game. He talked about how he put in a great shift for the LA Galaxy against Vancouver. And if you go back to that Vancouver game, that was the that was the zero zero draw yeah. game where the Galaxy he played. He did his job. He did his job, and that's what you need sometimes. And Siggy was talking about highs and lows. He goes, with any player, you need consistency. He goes, you want a guy whose highs are high, but his lows aren't too low. You don't want to have these valleys. He goes, and with Ari, he needs to be that consistent player. Yeah. Um, and so that's what he's looking for out of him. And so if Ari can continue, he got two goals, probably should have had two more. Yeah. Zubak <laughs> should have had two or three. Yeah. I mean, Jameson maybe would have had a couple more yeah. as well. There was a whole bunch of goals available there. Yeah, that's one of the things. You don't want to be the guy who complains after a win, which I, I'm apt to do. But at the same time, you don't want to be hard on Ari Lasser after the guy got two goals and a 3-1 victory, uh, you know, basically responsible for winning the game. Uh, but he could have had more goals, and he could have done a little bit better. And, th and that's a good thing. We talked about uh, quadruple A guys, guys who are maybe too good for USL but not quite MLS ready yet. Ari Lasseter, to me, has the potential to kind of fall in that range. So if he starts scoring goals and getting comfortable and is getting minutes you know, with the first team and practicing with the first team and becomes more consistent, then, of course, there's a future there for him in MLS. But, um, but yeah, it, he – you could see him going in that that quadruple A route, which you don't want him to as a Galaxy fan. But you know, you see you see a, a, the possibility. There, there's a place on this roster for some late forward yes, subs, some late speed up front. To, yeah, and and by the way, the, you said speed. Um, the <laughs> LA Galaxy 
playing with those G2 guys yeah. and everybody else. Em- Emma, Emma, Br- Bradford, Zubak, and, and Lassiter. I mean, they had speed. That's that'll do it. There was speed on the field. We don't see that in the <laughs> senior team, and there was speed, Eric. And that's where I get. I'm not. We, I've said it. I don't think em, Emma Boateng is a starter sometimes. Okay, and he's been proving me wrong as of late, and I'm fine with that. He can conti- happily change your opinion ha- if he proves you wrong. That's right. And I have no. I, and I really like the kid too. Yeah. So like he's he's fun to watch. He brings a ton of energy. All Loves these the things. Game. Yeah, he does. Um, he has speed. He brings speed. It's the reason that he's such a good sub is because he brings that speed. There's a reason that that change of pace is so dangerous. And by the way. Is there a faster player in Major League Soccer than Ima Boateng? Yeah. I mean, well, and we saw it. I, I mean, say what you will about um, FC Golden State Force being an amateur side, but they were on a break, and Emma ran all the way back across the field, you know, maybe maybe 65 yards to, to catch up and defend. Yeah. I don't know that you have other players on this roster who could do that. He's, uh, to me, the only guy who could probably do that. Not only that, but was originally beaten on the play. The play got played <laughs> f- played past him. Yes. It wasn't his job to cover, but the mm-hmm. ball went past him. And he turns around, and you, you're sort of like, oh, he's not going to run. Yeah. And he just slow. In this particular case, he saw the breakaway, and he knew he was going to get yeah. there. Like, it wasn't an issue. And he's like, yeah. I'm going to get there. It's yeah. okay. And he got there, <laughs> and he just gets. And he's so, this is where he excels. Because uh, he struggles at finishing. He struggles at crossing. Um, he struggles at dribbling sometimes, mm-hmm. but where he excels is his, I know, <laughs> so, all these things, he can't. So scoring, <laughs> passing, <laughs> dribbling. What, what do you need to, what sport are we playing? I don't know. He does, he's fine. But, I understand what you're saying. But he excels at this, at two things. One, obviously, is speed, but duh. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one is uh, his ability to put his body in a position to keep the ball away from another player. Yeah. He's able to, with that speed, speed up just enough, yeah. Pull in front of somebody and then hit the brakes and yeah. use his body to shield somebody and yeah. take the ball. That's what he does well against defenders. He he kind of throws defenders off because you think, oh, he's going to go full speed and the defender passes him up and he, he knows when to cut and t- he takes it right to that ed- end line. And you would think with a guy with his speed and, and almost a little bit of recklessness that he'd go over the end line. But if you really pay close attention, he does not go over the end line very often. No. Uh, with as hard as he attacks that that end line to, to put the ball across. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with what Emma's, Emma's bringing to the team. But like you said, it's an impact off the bench, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, but but it, it's off the bench. But if I could get somebody who had three quarters of his speed and start them at left back, and then bring Ema on afterward, the problem is that whenever you bring Ema on, you you need that speed, yes. and he's used as a relief valve for mm-hmm. the Galaxy whenever they have possession and they want to dump it. Um, he's used to generate offense, even though sometimes I think he dribbles into trouble and he doesn't get the pass off and mm-hmm. the assist he got in Portland was lucky. But hey, all those things are fine. But, but he, you gotta, he, he keeps trying that. That's the thing. He, he makes consistent you know, shots. He, he fires up that side. And maybe he doesn't get it every time, but the one's going to ske- squeak through every now and then. Yeah. So, um, so that so that that was the the lineup that you had, and the galaxy again. They got uh, an early goal from Lassiter, which was the bite the bicycle scissor. kick. Yeah, I don't even call it a scissor kick. By the way, I don't even like. I don't even. <laughs> yeah, there was there okay. Was, we're going there was, semantics there was, here. There was no shifting of the feet to, <laughs> to indicate a scissor there. It all was, right, but right. it was very good. It was a good ball by Boucher. Um, it was a, a good, you saw him see it right away. He adjusted right away. You could see him setting up for it. As soon as Busher hit it, he was like, I got this, Yes. Uh, which is good to see. So he's anticipating that and he's thinking ahead. Um, I'll be honest, the, the, the team that was on the field crosses the ball better than the senior team (laughs) because they cross the ball with pace and with, with a driven crosses Mm -hmm. instead of mostly floated crosses. I think, I feel like the senior team floats the ball too much. It drives me crazy. You get a chance everybody (laughs) to get underneath it. Don't stop it. Pick out a target, hit them with pace, score a goal. Um, so anyway, uh, so, so there was, there was that, um, you know, for me, I, I thought Lasseter's second goal, which was the one that sealed it, the three, one was a great goal because it showed to me the, the pace that he hit the ball with yeah. wasn't hard. It was yeah. more just like it was the composure and the and the finishing ability. Opened up a yeah. little bit of space, got away from the defender by about a half a yard, was able to put a left footed shot around the defender, around the goalkeeper, yeah. and and that was Again, what they consistent, needed. Consistent doing your job, doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And and you mentioned it, you know, you're talking about a little bit how the the one to seal it. And I think this was a tale of two halves. Um the first half, the galaxy dominated possession. They made um, FC Golden State Force look like an amateur side. Oh, they, first they, half, they, yeah, one-way traffic. They looked completely lost. The Galaxy were all over them. And then the second half, 
I don't know if, you know, it was a combination of maybe the Galaxy letting the foot off the gas a little bit and then FC Golden State Force wanting to make a name and wanting to do something. But they, they had the Galaxy under pressure a lot of the second half. So um, Lasseter bailed them out. He got them to, he iced the game at the end. Right. But, but the game was a lot closer than it needed to be. I mean, the talent was there. I don't think it was ever really in danger. But but it seems like they went away from what was working in that first half. My friend who I took to the game, his name's James. He's a diehard Kings fan. He's a hockey guy. He does uh, the Kings Realm Pod, okay. you know, which is part of our Guys in Shorts Network. Shameless okay. plug. Right. Um, you know, he in the first half he he enjoyed the game. He loved the last order goal. And in the second half, he said, "Oh, they're doing dump and chase. This yes. is L.A. Kings hockey. You know, <laughs> you just flick it up and let the forwards follow." So. You know, hockey guys kind of understand that tactic, and it seemed like they went away from what was working and went to the dump and chase, the the long ball. There was so much good connection in the first half yeah. between Boucher, between Pedro, <laughs> yeah. between Boateng, between Jameson. Just point, blank, yeah, blank. The first half was dominant. I, I said, uh, I said as I was sitting in the quote unquote press box. Uh, <laughs> if you were at the game, you saw me sitting all the way down at the front there, um, amongst the commoners. Amongst the, that's right. I was, I was open for attack. Um, but I was I was sitting there and talking to uh, Dennis, who was sitting next to me, who was covering the game, and, and I said, I wish that the senior team played with this sort of pace because yeah. it was quick in the first half, quick passes, quick mm-hmm. movement, moving off the ball, getting open. These are guys that wanted the – I mean, there's certainly something, too. You see that an amateur team come in, you know that they want to beat the Galaxy. Yeah. That's no surprise there. Okay, that's fine. You understand that. The other part of that is – and there were people who were arguing that the Galaxy should play starters in this game, and six games – in 20 days is what it ends up being mm-hmm. after they play at RSL, which means a game every 3.3 days, which is a ridiculous yeah. pace to try to keep. You, you couldn't do it, and nor should you. You want to give these guys time to prove yeah. it, and if they can't beat an amateur team and you go out, then you're out. That's yeah. that's You deserve to be out. Yeah. That's how it works. But the, the part about the amateur team wanting to beat the, senior, the, the, the professional team is there, but then by giving the younger guys and some guys who have to fight for... These yeah, are guys you're who You're giving them fight. real real minutes, yeah. This, this, is, you're not, this isn't a case... I mean, if you put... A starting LA Galaxy team on there, maybe they they take their foot off the gas a little bit, and maybe they really do get surprised. But here you have uh, an amateur team who wants to fight, and you have guys who are not regular starters, and they're going to want to fight because they're going to want to impress. So I think it's a win-win for both teams for to play the roster that they did. At the end of the day, our bench players and Galaxy Two players beat an amateur side, which is what they were supposed to do. They did their job. Well, the Galaxy have now advanced to the round of sixteen, where they will travel to take on the Portland Timbers. Um, up in Portland. Uh, that game is Friday, June 15th at 8 p.m. Likely to be streams for this, so just chill out on We're everything. supposed to be on break, June 15th. Yeah, I know. Um, there, originally, it was thought maybe the games would be played on June 20th. Um, so the Friday, June 15th works for both teams. I think Portland had a game that was coming. The Galaxy get an extra week off during this break because they played that one week. A bye schedule. Yeah, there's a bye schedule. They get a bye, basically, during this World Cup break, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but this allows them basically to do it. So it'll be June 15th, 8 p.m. Streams likely to be available. Now the big question is, the Galaxy going up to Portland, you're playing an MLS team. Um, the Galaxy had just been up to Portland. That was the 1-1 draw. I mean, you're likely to see starters in this game. More starters than this last game. Yeah, I, I would think so. Um, but you're also going to still see some mm-hmm. some mixed in there. They're going to, and for whatever reason, I think they're going to mix it. Now, granted, they could go full A team. Um, and then also expect Portland to do the same, to respond in kind, because... You know, they're going to be in a similar situation where maybe they're not playing all their A team. And they have a game sooner than the Galaxy yeah. does. Although I think this is a good sort of happy medium yes. between when they wanted to play this game. So it works. Now, um, will Zlatan Ibrahimovic, everybody's, you know, first of all, I got asked like 12 million times whether Zlatan was going to make an appearance at the track and field stadium. Um, now, a bunch of the players were there. I wasn't holding my breath. Uh, yeah, the bunch of the players were there. A bunch of the senior team's guys were there. Uh, you That's had, half the fun. Is you, the, the guy? It was like a little uh, uh, a fashion show. <laughs> you know, Alessandrini comes out with his jean jacket, you know, Siani with it. <laughs> It, it, it was. It was actually. I, that was actually a pretty fun part of the game. It, it was. Uh, so you had. You had. Let's see if I can get uh, a bunch of the guys. You had Roman Alessandrini. You had Baggio Husidic. You had Rolf Felcher. So guys who were injured because yeah. Baggio is injured. By the mm-hmm. way, I don't know if I've said that on a podcast yet, but we found out about that over the weekend. Okay. I believe is that he is injured. Um, I don't. It's a lower body injury. We don't know exactly what. There you it, go. More it, NHL. Terms. Yeah, I know. That's what we were like. Great. Um, but but he was there. Um, you had Perry Kitchen there. You had Roman Alessandrini, Michael Ciani, uh, Shelvick was yeah, there. Jorgen Shelvick, Bingham. Uh, David Bingham, that guy, the guy that plays <laughs> not David Beckham, David Bingham. 
uh, plays goalkeeper for the LA Galaxy. He was there. Um, there were a bunch of guys that were there, and mo- the majority, I would say, the majority of the- Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole, there you go. Ashley Cole was there. Came to us at the same That's time. That's right. Um, so he was there. So a bunch of guys that were sitting there. Now Zlatan didn't make an appearance, and uh, I-, I said I don't think Zlatan knows where the track and field stadium <laughs> is, which is good. You don't need him there. There's there's nothing there. So you're good to go in terms of you got him a rest. You did the thing, but now you have. You definitely have something with Zlatan and whether or not he would even want to go to that Portland game because they were certainly cautious with him going up to play in that uh, in that game before, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to play on turf. They, they played him the last 15 minutes or so, 18 minutes, 18 minutes, 72nd minute. Uh, last 18 minutes or so, and they preached that they were cautious with him on turf. But if you're really that cautious with him, you don't play him. at all. Yeah. Oh, good. We have a phone call. This will be nice. fun. Uh, 3-1-0, who's this? Hey, this is John from Venice. John from Venice. Thanks for calling in, buddy. What do you got? I don't know if you guys covered this already um, in the, the Portland recap, but I just wanted to talk about one particular play from that game that just really stood out to me. I thought it was super interesting to watch, although not in a good way. Okay. It was when Ja Pedro, this isn't about maybe the 80th minute or so, Ja Pedro makes a good stop uh, okay. deep in our half. Uh, brings the ball down, brings it most of the way down the field, and Zlatan's there. And Zlatan is in an offside position. Oh, yes. He I, raises I, I know. his hand. I, yep. Yep. I know where you're going. Him off. Uh-huh. Uh, just the drama there and the absolute lack of chemistry was just really amazing to see because, because Zlatan is the guy that essentially bumped Jao Pedro down to the B team. I mean, and just the two of them there. Okay. And if Zlatan makes the effort to run six feet farther back, he's on. Uh, he's on side. Everything's good. But instead, he just doesn't. He doesn't lift a finger. Yeah, it was really well, interesting. He did lift a finger to he, tell him no pass to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He did not break a sweat. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that some of that in the Portland game was the Galaxy probably brought Zlatan on to kill that game off too. I mean, I know there's lots of people who think that they probably brought Zlatan on to win that game. Um, If it was in a position, they were going to take it, but otherwise they were going to be very cautious with it. And you saw in the waning minutes... The the game plan was to kill, kill it. it. They weren't trying to move forward or press. But here's what here's what I'll have to say about that. Um, there's two people at fault for that play. All right, one of them's name is Joel Pedro, and one of them's name is Zlatan <laughs> yeah. Ibrahimovic. N- neither of them came out looking like roses. Yeah, smelling because, like roses. Because yeah. Zlatan is trying to get forward and get the ball early there, and I think he expected the ball perhaps a little bit earlier mm. from Pedro. And one That's of the exactly biggest, what happened, yeah. yeah, one of the biggest complaints that Zlatan has had on the field, and you can see it, is guys waiting too long to play Service. the ball. Yeah, it's 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 that. And whenever that happens, you pull them offside. One of the reasons Zlatan has been offside so many times is because the Galaxy have been slow in getting in the ball, and that's an adjustment that he has to make because MLS players aren't as good as uh, the players that he had in the English Premier League. And and that's one thing I will say. Uh, I'm Team Zlatan. Uh, I I, I think he helps this team. I think he he can do a lot of good things. But one thing I have seen in recent games is that frustration. And I think that's something that we need to keep an eye on and be very careful. I'm a big guy into body language. And you see the way the way he waved off Juan, the way he looks, I think Kamara, he looked at Kamara, he gave him a lot of glancing looks. Yeah, like he, he wasn't giving him double bird. Yeah, so, uh, so, games ago. yeah, so, so it's, I think we need to keep an eye on that and monitor that. He, he has to be aware of that these guys are not going to put it on a platter for him. Um, at the same time, yes, you want your teammates to do the best, but you can't, you can't be, you know, like you're, you're above the law. Even if anyone is going to be above the law, it's Slaton. Uh, but I just think we need to mm-hmm. be careful with that. Because, and this is coming from a guy who, who loves the fact that we have him on our team. But that's just something I have noticed, is that he's definitely getting frustrated with some of his teammates. Yeah, and he's that way. Yeah. Hey, John, he's that way with – he has been yeah, that way with everybody. Exactly, with everyone he's in, ever played in his, with. <laughs> in his entire career. So, it's on his report card. Does not play well with others. Yeah, he, he's, he's never that guy. If you read his uh, his autobiography, which I would suggest you do, it's a great – I think it's a great read. I have. Uh, it's oh, terrific. Yeah, and and one of the things he talks about listening and not listening – <laughs> um, where he listens, but he doesn't listen because, you know, coaches will tell him to do something and he listens to the coach, but he's also not going to listen to him because they're telling him to do something yeah. that he doesn't want to do, <laughs> right? Like, and that he's not going to yeah. do. So it's it's one of those things. I, I, I know what you're saying there. It was uh, it was interesting 
to see him and that play, and I was sitting there going, it's going to be bad. Don't yeah. pass him the ball. Don't, <laughs> don't pass him the ball. Yeah. You know, And you've seen that on other guys where it's like, yeah. don't pass it to me. I'm offside. I know yeah. I'm offside. And there's things. I, but at the same time, Joao was also out of options. I mean, what was he, if he was just yeah. going to dribble into the other but, defender? You're almost better off getting the offside call than getting a turnover. There. Yeah, yeah. There was nobody who also made the run. Yeah. There was no support there either. So I mean, you know, you look at that, and yeah, it's a bad. I, I agree, it's a bad moment. It doesn't yeah, it's look a good. Light. <laughs> um, it, it's not great. But I would say that there's a lot of blame there. You could even blame the rest of the Galaxy team for not getting into a forward position to be able to receive those passes from Pedro. Be- knowing Zlatan was offside, that means there should have probably been somebody else open mm-hmm. somewhere. Um, but that was at a point. Point where the galaxy were killing the game. The game off. plan was to kill. Yeah, yeah. You, could, you could tell that's what it was, and people have argued that by the way that that wasn't what they were trying to do. But I don't, I well, don't know how you watch that game and not. If not you come look back at the conclusion. ninety, I mean, just go back and look at after the ninetieth minute, they had possession. If they wanted to, they could have pressed, and they didn't. They just passed it back. So. Yeah, no, I did not understand the last play of the game. Yeah, and, that, and maybe it's just we're watching it on television, and it's more clear to us than this to them. But it seemed like it was obvious to everyone on the field. We've got the last possession here. He's going to blow the whistle. I didn't understand why they didn't take a shot and that where they were holding it for 20 seconds or so at the end. Yeah, I, again, um, thinking you know when the referee blow, yes. is going to blow the I whistle is, is a little to. dangerous. You never I've, know. I've seen the Galaxy yeah. this year below that, sort, that type of play where they're like, hey, uh, let's go for a goal. And instead it turns into the, the Galaxy's biggest problem they have and have had since the beginning of the season is their transition when they lose the ball and what happens when they lose the ball. And in that case, it's just they're playing it safe. You're playing the hottest team in Major League Soccer. You you go up there. You're in the position to get a point. There's 20 seconds left. Yeah, if it's perfect, maybe you go for it. If it's not perfect, maybe and you just go to the corner. get a break against the way, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to risk it. So, so that's where I sit on that. Awesome, John. Thanks for calling, buddy. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Take good, care. Good All stuff, right. John. All right. There we go. If you want to get in and call as well, you're more than welcome to 949-734-4217. Uh, if you are already listening to this on the podcast, then you can call into a different number. Uh, use the Corner of the Galaxy hotline, which is where our voicemail is. It's 949-385-2641. That's 949-385-COG1. Oh, wow. wow. It's isn't like you that, planned that on purpose. It's special, isn't it? <laughs> it's special. All right. Um, but no, I mean, thinking Zlatan, Zlatan's probably going to be gone for the World Cup. Remember, he is going to the World yeah, Cup. He's he, made that known. There's commercials. He will be at the World Cup. He will be there. <laughs> he will take his plane. It will yeah. fly him there. Yeah. Uh, he will go there and he will enjoy that World Cup, which should, I, I have no problems with it. I'm not going to get upset about him missing a U.S. Open Cup game. Kamara could play. Um, you know, that's certainly certainly a chance that uh, for Kamara to get in there. You're going to have a mostly A team, and the Galaxy sometimes look better without Zlatan, so maybe they have a chance to beat Portland uh, there. We got another call coming in. Uh, 424, who's this? Hey, Josh, this is Hugh from Reddit. Hey, Hugh, how's it going, buddy? What do you got? Well, I was just thinking, you know what, after the podcast, uh, how about the three of us go out for a little late night party, get ourselves <laughs> some drinks. Uh, hell, why not? Let's get ourselves some escorts. Yes. Are about, you thinking 30? Uh, Are you, about yeah, 10 a, each. A 10 each. That's a, that's a, that's a good number. <laughs> I like uh, your math. I, perhaps would you be talking about a, a party that the Giovanni, that Giovanni Dos Santos and Jonathan Dos Santos, as well as I think six other uh, Mexican national teams, uh, attended in Mexico before they, uh, before they left? Yes, sir. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I have my opinions on it. I wanted to get your guys' opinion on it as well. Huh. This is a good, this is difficult for me, Hugh. I'll generally say that what you do in your personal time on an off day. First of all, I ha- I think I have to explain this to people. Uh, professional athletes have so much off time that I'm pretty sure I would get in trouble if I was a professional <laughs> athlete. And I'm a fairly pr- straight shooter. Now I don't know if I'd go for paid companionship, so yeah. to so to speak. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I have a problem with being too hard on them. I also happen to know that the Spanish media, the Spanish-speaking media, the Mexican press are ridiculously hard on the Mexican national team. So um, I, I sometimes don't know how much to. Mm, I sometimes don't know how much to believe yeah. on all this stuff. But uh, if they were doing it, and if they were, it doesn't look great for Mexico. But I don't expect that it hurts them or it hurts the Galaxy very much. It, PR-wise, maybe it yeah. hurts a little bit, but I don't. None of these guys, I don't think anybody thinks they're angels, Eric. What, yeah, do, you, what do you think? I think it's going to come down to, um, and we've had this discussion, do you care about the moral values of your team or do you care about the product on the field? And so um, if the Mexican Federation 
thinks that these players are valuable. Maybe they'll kind of look the other way. It doesn't look like there's going to be any punishment for this, and it is allegations. It's nothing confirmed. Um, but again, if you feel like these guys are representing their country, they're representing our values, and they're not handing, hand, representing our country uh, in the way we want it represented, then maybe there, there will be punishment. I know in 2011, uh, there were eight players who were sent home from a Copa America from a very similar incident, right. and Jonathan Dos Santos was one of those players yeah. who was sent home. So it, it's it's not unprecedented to see this them um, punished for this, but it, it looks in this case, it's something that they're going to have to talk about with their their wives and or girlfriends or wives and girlfriends uh, to kind of talk through what what exactly happened yeah, at I, the party. Yeah, I think that's that might be the bigger comment. I'll tell you what it does for yeah. me, Hugh. The the biggest problem it has is it is it goes to show some immaturity for me. Yes, um, and that's probably the biggest right. takeaway I can pull back to the, to the galaxy is whether or not these guys are mature enough to be the the two designated players on the LA Galaxy. And one of the players linked is right. Memo Ochoa, who's a veteran on the team at this point, and Giovanni dos Santos. <laughs> as a veteran on this team. But here's an interesting part of the, the article that I was reading is that uh, during the first half of the party, Giovanni had his LA Galaxy jersey and, and was unable to perform. But his, his his teammates handed him the Mexico jersey and he was able to get the job done. There so, you go. You know, I, I don't know how credible this source is, but you know, that's what I read. That, yeah, Al- allegedly. Well, <laughs> see, for me, for me as a Galaxy fan, as a Mexican national team fan, I have Mexican family, we're hardcore fans. I, I don't care what these guys do in their off time, right? They could be drinking goat's blood. I don't know, having orgies. Yes. It doesn't matter. That's their personal life. But I see the lack of professionalism, especially the professionalism that it shows or the lack of professionalism that it shows. You're one week away, right, from the World Cup. And most pro athletes, you know, they're – in their A game, getting prepared, one week to go. These guys are out partying yeah. and having sex with prostitutes. I mean, that just shows the lack of professionalism there. It's not a moral issue with me. It's just, you know, as as a fan of the national team and the galaxy, I'm I'm sick of I'm sick of it. I'm just sick yeah. of it, man. That's that, that's how I feel. No, 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 I, I I know what you're saying, Hugh. And just to play devil's advocate, uh, I understand that you want to be in the right mental space to before you go off to a World Cup, but these guys were also in a tense situation where they didn't know if they were going to make the team, possibly, maybe they weren't, and now they finally they made the team, we're going to Russia, we're on a World Cup squad, we just had a victory in one of these tune-up games, let's let loose and party before we need to focus again. Yeah. So maybe that's the devil's advocate, yeah, I mean, a you lot, know, if you're going to defend it. A lot of teams, and a, a lot of times managers will say, uh, no, yeah. no relations yes. during the World Cup, so <laughs> Maybe this was the last chance. Now again, yeah. they have to deal with their wives and girlfriends and all that that's stuff. A whole and nother, I, I yeah. That's a whole nother di- discussion. But um, you know, hey, maybe that's the last. You, you blow off some steam, you do some stuff. So I, yeah, playing devil's advocate, you can see it. I, I agree with hurrah. you. I agree with you though, Hugh. It, you know, maturity, professionalism. It, it doesn't leave a. a oh, I was going to say something. Careful, the family yeah, show. It's a family show. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make me feel. Uh, you know, real confident. Well, and already on thin ice with Giovanni dos Santos making six million dollars a year as a Galaxy Galaxy designated player. This doesn't help his case at all. Well, he probably in, footed in the bill. Maybe he. I hope he did. I hope he did. So anyway, that that's what we got. Anything else, you? That's it. Good night. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks you. We appreciate it. All right. Um, no, I mean. Uh, we knew that was going to come up. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's 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 uh, again. It just goes to point to show that it's like, come on, be smart. About it. They know that they, all yeah. the cameras are watching them right now. You know Especially that those guys in Mexico. If yeah, I mean, they had some some warm up games here in Pasadena, and maybe maybe we didn't hear about it. Maybe they had maybe, a maybe, similar situation here in L.A. Maybe but didn't. maybe you you throw these parties, you know, you don't throw it in, in your own backyard. So yeah, maybe it's not the wisest. It's not a good look. And it's probably not the wisest move. It's not, but it's not a horrible look. It's, it's not like, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no crime. Well, I guess, I, think, I don't know. No, is it a crime? a crime? I don't I, know I, if it I, is in Mexico. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, and, and that's, again, that's where you get in, into the thing. I just, I have a hard time, it, as me as a person, I have a hard time telling you what you can do yeah. in your own personal life. On that's your day off. On your day off, right? That type of thing. And I'm serious when I say professional athletes have a ton of uh, professional soccer players so you get up early in the morning you probably go lift weights and stuff like that you go train that probably takes two and a half hours 
you have the rest of the day to I'd yourself. I like that work schedule. I know, right? That's not too bad, <laughs> right? And then you get to play, and you have to play soccer. But that is, and but it's about, it's more than that too. And if uh, I remember talking to Landon Donovan at a fan event once, and so we're at this fan event. We're on the top of a building in downtown LA on the roof. They were uh, they were unveiling a jersey, and so it was this big, you know, sh- swarmy thing. It was great. It was a great time. Um, so everybody there is drinking, having a beer, the whole thing. And some of the players had a beer or two. And you go up to Landon Donovan. And Landon Donovan's st- standing there, and he's got water in his hand. And I'm like, Landon, can I, you know, and, and I think one of my friends was there and was like, Landon, can I get you a drink? And uh, they were, they were, he was like, no, 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 I have to drink water. And it's like, well, what? He, come on, man. You know, you don't have a game tomorrow, the whole deal. He's like, no, no, no. He goes, one, he goes, it's not good for my body if I drink. He goes, and I have to be prepared for the game that's in like two or three days or whatever it was. And two is... I don't want people here seeing me drinking because yeah. then they're going, oh, Landon didn't Landon, play well because he was drinking a and beer. The, and that's the thing. When you're in the spot, Landon Donovan drinking a beer, the golden boy for American soccer, if a picture like that gets out, it's totally understandable. I was listening to a podcast recently talking about the 1998 men's team when John Harks was cut um, from the roster because uh, Steve Sampson had discovered that he was having an affair, affair with yeah. Eric Winalda's wife. And right. so you know, he, in the interview, said, that's not a person who I wanted – you know, representing what I thought to be America's values, America's captain. And Eric Winaldo wanted him on the roster. <laughs> and, and so that just go. It's it comes down to leadership and what you want in your team. It, it's that would be a little major league there, yeah, right? Big yeah. Time. Yeah. That's, that's how it goes. Um, yeah. It was, it was always interesting. Uh, yeah. No, that's a great, that's such yeah. an interesting it, story. It ties in perfectly with what's going on. The bottom line is that you never really know what happens with these teams until well after, for the most part, whenever people feel comfortable talking. Um, I was told, you know, we were talking about Zlatan Ibrahimovic and his his um, his demonstrative nature on the field and how he waves his arms and, <laughs> oh, I get so mad. And I'm like, oh, well, it reminds me a lot of Robbie Keane. And I was talking with some, I was talking with some players. <laughs> yes, and does. they're like, yeah, but there's something different there. And I'm, well, yeah. what's the difference? Well, Zlatan off the field is the nicest guy in the world. The nicest guy what in the world. What about Robbie, though? Right? And they were like, <laughs> Robbie wasn't. Robbie was the same way on the field as he yeah. was off the field, right? And so... Every- which which is what makes them great, though. It, it, when when someone is that driven that they, they will, you know, rip your heart out in order to get you to do what they want to score and to win... Yeah, they're a jerk, but at the same time, they're you're gonna hop on their shoulders and, and ride them to a couple MLS a, cups a, as well. A, a, especially strikers, they're yeah. the, they're the worst. Yeah, right. They're they, selfish. They're selfish. <laughs> they're egotistical. I mean, they would push their own mother down in order to score a goal. They're like, "Mom, no, that's my ball," you know, Absolutely. and push it off. I mean, the the best demonstra- demonstration of that, and we mentioned him, was Christian Wilhelmsen about ready to score his only goal for the Galaxy. It was going in. Robbie he had already taped everything. It was we're gonna roll over the line, and Robbie King got there just before it tapped it in and he's yeah. like yeah and raises his yeah. hand and, and Wilhelmson's like oh, man I just uh, I don't know what I have to do man. yeah to me my favorite and I think it was mentioned on this show I think you know the panda mentioned it was the 2000 uh, 2012 World Cup or World Cup World, MLS, MLS Cup, Cup right where ending minutes they get a penalty Beckham's last game you think oh let's let's end this with a fairy and nope nope I, I am the penalty shooter I am the goal scorer I am going to put this in that's and a, that, that tells you everything you need to know yeah yeah Zlatan by the way every dealing that I've had with Zlatan has been Way more interesting one and way more uh, nice. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what I expected. I expected him to yeah. be meaner, to be honest. And everything so far with the press, maybe it's because we're all softies yeah. in the United well, States. It, I don't know. I think you see everything he does, especially with his media appearances. It's done with a wink and a smile. Yeah. And, and I think that's where well, that's where the difference is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's the whole thing. So it's all about – and I, I thought – Tim Howard said something really interesting because he was talking about chemistry. They were talking about this is coming. If you've been reading any of the articles that come out, they've been talking about the failure to, for the U.S. to qualify. That's, there's been a ton of dirt. <laughs> that if has if you love up. that, like I said, there's you know you can apply that directly into the veins right now. There's tons of stuff out there. But Tim Howard was talking about chemistry, and he goes, he goes, chemistry is is not like everybody getting along in the locker room. He goes, he goes, not at all. He goes, chemistry is about understanding a style of play, yeah. understanding what your teammates are trying to do, understanding that stuff. He goes, it doesn't matter what, he goes, yeah. I've had teams where, you know, you get along great in the locker room and I've had teams where you get along and it, I've been successful in both yeah. of those teams. It doesn't matter. But chemistry is about having a style. The Galaxy don't have chemistry right now. Yeah. They don't have a style of play. Yeah. Well, and it goes back to 
like you said, chemistry is not liking the guy and getting along with it. Chemistry is knowing what the guy, what move is the guy going to make on the field. And so that pass between Joao and Zlatan, they're not on the same page. No, no chemistry. Joao didn't know what Zlatan was going to do. Zlatan didn't know what Joao was going to do. And that's where there's the lack of chemistry. If those guys go off the field and they go have a beer together and, and hug each other, that's great. But that that's not what chemistry is. And no, that's no. not what we're talking about. Not at all. 714, who's this? Hey, Josh, this is Diego. Diego, thanks Diego's for calling back. in. Where are you calling from, Diego? Uh, I'm here in uh, um, Cyprus. Cyprus, all right. I, kn- Cyprus. I saw the 714 number. I figured you were clo- you were closer to me, and you are. Th- that's good. All right, what can we do yeah. for you, sir? So there was one thing that I would change in the galaxy, and it's sad for me to say this, is to get rid of Giovanni Dos Santos. Because one, I think he's done, just like Jesse Zardes. And two... With the popular performance he's done recently, having yeah. a party out, yeah, yeah, I think he's done. You think like, he's done? Yeah, we well, don't need him anymore. I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. Yeah. So I think you'd probably be on the popular side of things, Diego. As far but as he I was think, saying, if there's one thing you could change, change, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want, if you one thing, I, I agree. I, I mean, it is because one, you would get rid of Giovanni dos Santos, who I think has been underperforming for the Galaxy, and whether or not it's that the Galaxy don't know where to play him, don't know how to play him, I figured they would. Re- Find that out over the last three years, yeah. um, but that hasn't happened. So yeah, you could get rid of them. Um, and two, it opens up a designated player spot where you really need a number ten, yeah. and yeah. there's no number ten. Technically, he wears a number ten. Yeah, and yeah. whatever. No. <laughs> but but Diego also bring up a good point that he's like Giassi Zardes. Giassi Zardes moving him was the best thing that ever happened. So maybe what Gio needs to, to, for Giassi, yeah, it was the best thing that ever for, happened for Giassi. Yeah, that's what yeah. I meant. Is yeah. for for Giassi, he needed a change of scenery. He needed somewhere else where he could be put in a position to to succeed. So maybe Gio needs to go somewhere else. It's because it's not happening here. So maybe he needs to go somewhere else where maybe a coach is going to be able to maximize that talent uh, that that we know could be in there, but just hasn't seemed to to rear its head consistently for the LA Galaxy. Hey man, if if he wants to go Diego and it makes and he's he finds himself in another land where he's <laughs> able to play, I am all for. It. I mean, it's just not going to work for the Galaxy and he's burning bridges. I mean, yeah. I have said this. I, I think I was talking to Eric before the before the show even started and we were talking about Giovanni Dos Santos and I go there's there's this weird thing that happens with Gio though. It's that everybody in the LA Galaxy locker room loves Giovanni Dos Santos. And him and Jonathan, they're both great guys. Uh, they're good teammates, yeah. like all that stuff. But they're just—it's just not fitting. It's not working. Mm-hmm. And if you have to, we've talked mm-hmm. about it a million times. If you have to move Geo, and that means that you have to move Jonathan as well, you you pull the trigger and you make the move, and you you move them both as, as a pair. It's like a sacrifice for the good of the team. Yeah, it it would be awesome, Diego. Anything else? Uh, yeah, my unpopular opinion, which. Yes. I don't think I can like it. Is to bring back Omar Gonzalez. Oh, you get out! <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Hey, he I'm said sorry. it was unpopular. He, 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 he told is. you up front. He, he found one right away. They were talking about that in the chat room as well. Thanks, Diego. We appreciate the call. All right. Thank you, Josh. All right, there he goes, Diego. Um, uh, bring back Omar Gonzalez. I am totally against it, but I have to admit that I have biases against Omar Gonzalez, and it has to do with the 2014 MLS Cup, and I will never let that play ever get out of my head. <laughs> So uh, they, he, 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 he lounged into the corner and got the ball stolen from him when all he had to do was run too hard two more steps. He would have got the ball, cleared it out, and the Galaxy would have won that game, not in extra time. They would have won it in regulation. Yeah, yeah um, to, me, to me, it's with Omar, it comes down to dollar signs. He's not coming without a hefty price tag, and I think it's just not worth it. And he just got moved, too. Mm-hmm. Did you see to that? Atlas. He's with Atlas. Mm-hmm. So he went from, uh, from Pachuca? Mm-hmm. Yeah, from Pachuca to Atlas um, in the Liga MX draft. Which I don't even That's pretend true. to understand. <laughs> hey, I can barely keep Tune track of the MLS. That, that podcast is on Wednesday nights. Yeah, exactly. We have to find somebody else to do that. By the way, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, John Patrick who is in uh, our chat room says uh, this American Irishman is here and an LA Galaxy fan because of Robbie Keane. So be careful. We're, I don't think we're banging no, on Robbie Keane. Well, I'm saying it's what made what makes him good. It is. Yeah. It's that selfish, arrogant yeah. attitude that apparently carried both on and off the field, which is great. Which is great. It's been four years. They're yelling at me. It's been four years, Josh. It's been four years. <laughs> Get over it, it. Let it go. No, I, I can't. I can't. I you can't. have you have the MLS Cup. No, yeah. Well, you know, barely. You also have the wooden spoon. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I have the wooden <laughs> spoon right here in the in in the office as well. Which, by the way, I, I think I got I got I got I got spoken to on on after I was leaving the game, the track and field stadium. Somebody was very upset that I had the wooden spoon in here and that it was a part of the studio and could be seen on our camera sometimes. Um, which, by the way, I'm going to change the view oh, right now. So you need to hold it? I, was, I don't no, know if no, I'm no, supposed no, to touch it or Yeah, I was going to. No, you're fine. I don't know what the etiquette is. Yeah, yeah. you're fine. Um, so the wooden 
Wooden Spoon is here and was very upset that it was in the in the studio here. I will tell you this about the Wooden Spoon. One, it's an official trophy. Uh, it was it was done by the international or excuse me, the independent supporters, um, independent supporters it's groups. Groups, it's no council, independent okay. supporters council. I see it, ISC, independent supporters council. Uh, they created it, they created it three years ago. That's why there are three names on it right now. Um, and it is a reminder of what happens when you don't do things right. And so, this right here, whenever you see it uh, on our podcast, or if you're listening, if you've ever gone to our webpage, you can see a picture of it that's in the studio. This is not a celebration of anything, this is a reminder of what happens when things don't go bad. And I think it is, it is uh, my duty as, as a member of the press, uh, having this podcast since 2000. Uh, to remind people, to remind fans, to remind players, to remind front office members what happens when they don't do their job correctly. And that's what it is. You get the wooden yeah. spoon. And we mentioned it earlier with with Emmer Clementa, how he's learning from his mistakes. Uh, the only way that you get better is by learning from your mistakes. You have to fall on your face in order to figure out how not to fall on your face again. And so I understand the logic of having it here. And and we need to wear it. We need to own it. I mean, there wasn't another team that came in last place that we can ship this off to. This is the, what the, the LA Galaxy organization and product that they put on the field last year, this is what they earned, and right. this is what they have to carry with them. Can I tell you about something that's really interesting about the trophy? One is that it was built very, the, the person who built it actually contacted me and was like, you know, how's it holding up? And I said, it's holding up great. Um, you know, it's a little crooked. He goes, no, 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 I built that into it. Yeah, it's supposed to be crooked on purpose. The charm. Yeah, he goes, is the spoon holding up? And I'm like, yeah, it's cracked. He goes, it cracked the moment I put it in there. I yeah. thought it was fitting, left yeah. it alone. I'm like, okay, great. Absolutely. But the, the thing is, the wooden spoon trophy Whenever it gets to go to the next team, before it gets to go, the supporters groups and, and probably Angel City Brigade, LA Riot Squad, Galaxians, I don't know how they'll figure it out, but they get to change the trophy in one way before they send it back. Um, this time, before it came out um, from the Chicago Fire, I believe, mm -hmm. um, whenever before it came out from the Chicago Fire, the name of the trophy was changed. Um, instead of it just saying the wooden spoon on it, it says the Anthony Precourt Memorial Wooden Spoon, and that dude's still alive, so that's nice. And the owner of current owner of the Columbus crew, maybe soon to be the Austin crew, um, however that's going to work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was that was the change they made. So the Galaxy fans will, uh, Galaxy supporters will add get to something. change it, add something, change it somehow. So uh, you know, if I were a betting man, I would I would guess uh, you know, possibly if some front office faces might make their way on the trophy or perhaps a Jermaine Jones. Yeah. So I would guess that <laughs> some of there's, there's an, an added, a uh, piece of flair involving but, one of those, uh, those figures. I don't even want to, but I will, I will, I'm holding it here for the supporters whenever they need it, they get to have it back. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll do an event where you can come see it. Um, or, or I can take it somewhere and you can, you can take a picture with it and, and show your displeasure for it. Or it's, at the end of the season, you know, yeah. hopefully when we don't have to <laughs> have it anymore, Whatever addition is going to be made, that's the event. Is we're going to do this to the to the wooden spoon and then ship it off and, and then uh, ship to it off. Seattle. I'm I'm not in charge. Of, I'm in charge of it in terms of I'm the the keeper of it, but I am not in charge of doing anything to it. I would not be involved in that. I'm just here to hold it in case there was another thing. Cool thing that happened is a listener actually contacted me and has an awesome poster that's going to get hung up here in the studio nice. um, that we're that I'm working on probably getting this. It's a it's a four by six foot poster signed by Robbie Keane, oh, there the go. king himself. There we go. We got uh, the Irish fan back. We'll, we'll be represented here in the studio somehow uh, very shortly, so we'll see. As long as I can get it in my car and make it fit. <laughs> we'll see how that works. Anyway, uh, so that's it. Now let's get on to uh, the LA Galaxy's game against uh, Real Salt Lake. That game is coming up on Saturday. This is the last game before the World Cup break. Um, they will play on the 15th, so that's new. It used to be that they weren't playing any games between June 9th and June 30th, but they're going to play on the 15th now against Portland, so that'll be in that U.S. Open Cup game, so keep an eye for that. This game uh, will kick off at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, Spectrum Sportsnet, Spectrum Deportes, against a surging Real Salt Lake. They are a much better team than they were at the beginning of the season. They are 7-6-1 and one for 22 points right now, 14 games played, third in the Western Conference, and 7 in the supporter shield you match that up against the LA Galaxy also playing 14 games 5 7 and 2 17 points um, eighth in the Western Conference 15th in the supporter shield so if you looked at just the standings alone just the standings alone the LA Galaxy should lose this game this is a team that is way way better than them in terms of standings um, they're seven positions taller than them in yeah. terms of the supporter shield all those things line up to tell you that RSL is going to come in and they're going to smack the Galaxy across the face but not so fast but not so fast Eric <laughs> when says. you look at their away record they're one five and one so away from home they they are not a team that performs well and also if you're a believer in some, you know, it doesn't matter who's on the team. There are certain teams that you just kind of have their number. 
and the LA Galaxy in recent years have had the number uh, of of Real Salt Lake and in particular, you know, Mr. Emma Boateng. I was going to say. And so it's interesting that he started this U.S. Open Cup match, and you know, it was, I know at one time, according to Wikipedia, he was the owner of Real Salt Lake. He was the owner. So, so you know, I'm going to see how he factors into this game. Uh, I think this is a winnable game. When you look at the schedule, you look at the games that RSL has won. Uh, you know, they kind of beat, you know, they have a couple key wins against, uh, you know, like a New York Red Bulls or, um, you know, Vancouver or or Houston, if you want to say that. But they beat Seattle twice. Uh, they lost to teams they're supposed to lose to. They beat to, against teams that are either struggling or kind of middle of the pack. So I don't think that they're, they've are they shown that they're anything special. They've benefited from their record, and, and they're doing well in the standings. But I think this is a winnable game for the Galaxy. It, it seems that way. I, I feel that way as well. If you watched uh, Real Salt Lake play against Seattle Sounders uh, this last weekend, I went and rewatched it. Although why would you? I don't. I, I have no <laughs> life. Um, my, I think my wife was, was away. Like, she was going to do something. Yeah. I was home alone. I was like, I could do this. Or I could clean, or and that sounded like okay, I would just fair. watch that. I'll yeah. take that over cleaning. Yeah, so I watched that game, and that was a one nothing game until well into the 90th, uh, the 90 90th minute. Yeah, and they got an open net goal, one of those uh, that you don't see all that often yeah. in soccer, but you saw it anyway. Uh, so they get the 2 nothing win. They just lost to Sporting Kansas City midweek. at RSL at midweek mm-hmm. for the U.S. Open. So they're out of the U.S. Open Cup. They're coming off a loss, yeah. Which is which is always nice, uh, <laughs> maybe. And, and Sporting Kansas City is the real deal in the Western Conference, so you would expect them to win that game. Yeah. So that makes some sense. You go into this game, um, guys. You should have available. Uh, Jonathan Dos Santos, Giovanni Dos Santos are gone. International duty. Ola Kamara done. Played 45 minutes in the second Norway game uh, midweek. There, uh, that's great. That's perfect. I mean, if you're a Galaxy fan, you're yeah. like, good. He got away from the team. A little mental break. A little physical break. There were some concerns that maybe he picked up, had an injury, and that's why he didn't play in the first game. Because when he was warming up, there was like it didn't look like it was yeah. great. But so far, it doesn't seem like that's the case. At least not yet. Although last time he came back, he did have a hip flexor injury that no he found out about until he said, oh, I'm 100% now because I don't have a hip flexor injury anymore. So um, Ola Kamara should be yeah. available. I don't know how many minutes he'll get, though, which, oh, could be a good thing. oh, here comes Josh gets so excited. <laughs> maybe we get to see Zlatan up by himself again to start this game. And maybe Ola Kamara can come on in the second half. Yeah. Um, so I- both worlds. Ima Boateng, probably a second half sub in yeah, this game, which makes sense. Uh, Sebastian Legette played some minutes. Maybe he, I, I think he still, still think, starts. Yeah, it's I think feel- with, when you see the roster, I think he, and with uh, the Dos Santos brothers being gone, there's a big hole in the middle of the midfield there, and I think legit fills in that spot. Yeah. He didn't get a ton of minutes. No, he, he didn't. So uh, he should be pretty good. Um, for the most part, any of the other starters were rested. Yeah, um, the, back, the whole back line that we've seen in, in past games, Cole, Shelvick, uh, Siani, and Romney, I think you'll see. Starting, starting this. I, I, don't, game. I don't know if Dave will be able to go after getting those like <laughs> three minutes that he got at the end of the game. Well, that, I was going to say, well, it's not going to be Clemente. He got the bulk of those he, minutes. He did. So, um, so you're sort of able to figure out who's starting in this game just by elimination. It'll just be a matter of whether Ola Kamara comes in and they start. And if they do start both of them, Kamara and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. What formation do yeah. they use? Because the Galaxy did sit in that Portland formation with a little bit of a three-five-two, which is people were kind of pushing on that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a good way to go, but they never, they didn't have Kamara for that game. They didn't have Zlatan until at the end. So it, yes, it worked, yeah. but will it work with those two, um, is a question. This is a big game for the galaxy. It's also the, I believe the 15th anniversary of StubHub Center. Opening. Also Portuguese heritage night. Portuguese you heritage night. the right guy on this week. I was, I'm, I'm on top of things, even though I just <laughs> alternate and, and do the whole thing. So anyway, no, that's what we have. So the LA Galaxy facing off against Real Salt Lake should be an interesting game. Uh, expect, I don't expect many surprises in terms of, of lineup. I mean, yeah, it should be pretty straightforward to what we've seen in the, you know, consistent starters that we've seen the Galaxy st- stroll out. The back line is going to be consistent. You're going to see Kitchen, you're going to see Alessandrini, you're going to see Legit, probably some Pontius, and then up front, you know, you're going to see Big Z, and we'll see what. What other option they come up with? Yeah, it'll, it's Kamara or, or something else. It'll be good. RSL is uh, is very, very. Very nervous that Ima Boateng will be playing in this game. I can tell you <laughs> that already. Just being in the building is enough. Though you know, I will say the one thing that we will need to, you know, if you have been down on or we have been down on our defense. It defensively, has been a bit of a struggle. And Real Salt Lake last time they went out, they went out with a four three three, and they do have you know guys that they can send forward. So that is something to be mindful of. So you know, maybe they won't go with that three five two against them just because. Of the way Real Salt Lake brings their attack. Uh, real quick, rumors: um, Cristiano Ronaldo to the LA Galaxy. That rumor has been <laughs> around. I just somebody said it, and so that rumor has been around for years. Which is why the only reason that I would even mention it is because that rumor has been around for years that he was always going to come to the LA Galaxy. And if, if you're going to announce it, 
Portuguese Heritage Night. It's a great night. That's so right. Get your tickets I have now. a feeling maybe after the World <laughs> Cup, if there's anything to that one. Um, you know, there's lots of things. There's lots of rumors out there. You'd have to move, again, DPs. It starts with Giovanni Dos Santos and Jonathan Dos serious. Santos. People aren't serious. That's not really going to happen. People are serious. They're, <sighs> de- they're in the chat room. They're that serious. I mean, if you're in the chat room, you're already pretty serious. Yeah. Um, just to go over our podcast schedule, um, <laughs> I say this more just so you can understand the pain that I will be going through in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I will get, we will have another podcast on Monday. We will be able to talk about that game. That podcast will be with the panda himself, Mr. Kevin Baxter. He will be reporting and recording from Russia as he leaves on Friday. So he will be in Russia when we do it. Nice. And that podcast will record on Monday at 6 a.m. Uh, 6 a.m. We and don't then, have to listen at 6 a.m. No, no, I'll okay. put it up. But okay, So basically perfect. Monday morning, you wake up. There should be a podcast there. Beautiful. With, done with, and done. With Pato and Panda in the morning. <laughs> right there for everybody. So um, that's the one. The the only other thing, so we're doing that for two two weeks. We'll have Monday podcasts that are on super early. Uh, the other thing is there's no show on Thursday the 21st, and there's no show on Monday the 25th. I'm out of town and traveling on both of those days. So do I get uh, like a prorated pay rate? You yeah, know? you do. Okay, of course. Yeah, you. You, don't, you don't have to. You get, uh, what is uh, half a zero times, yeah, I'll work times it one or I'll something? send it to my accountant. That works. Um, but there will be a podcast on the 28th to get you ready for the game against um, the uh, the San Jose Earthquakes up at Stanford Stadium on June 30th. Say, David Bingham. David, David Beckham. <laughs> David Bingham. It's one of those guys. They look so much alike, too. I mean, they're both <laughs> chiseled. No, they're not. Um, that doesn't work. All right, so that's what we have for the LA Galaxy. Uh, do you want to do predictions on RSL game? You think the Galaxy pull this one out? I think they do. I th- I'm predicting Galaxy win 3-1, and we see... Uh, the frustration that we've seen with Zlatan, we see a little bit of that go away. We start to see the chemistry build a little bit more um, with him on the field. I'm predicting 3-1 win, LA Galaxy. Ooh, Imo Boateng scores all seven goals. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I think the LA Galaxy get a win in this. Uh, Maybe it's a 2-1 game. Maybe they don't separate as much. Uh, Maybe it's a little nervy down the uh, stretch. Uh, The Galaxy need to score first, and they need to keep RSL off the board. If they can do those things, if they allow the first goal, they'll lose the game. That's, uh, that's that's their mo. That's how it works. They can't allow to do it. It can't happen anymore. They got to stop it. They have to be solid defensively. Um, if a three five two ends up happening and playing, which I feel like Siggy Schmidt is starting to warm to, um, then that could show that the Galaxy are starting to turn around. I've said this is sort of the balance point right now. After they come back from this break, after this RSL game, you need to see a team that's picking up that points. That knows who they are. And knows yeah. who they are. That understands no, each other. Yeah, I think after this World Cup break, the experimentation, we, we, we shouldn't be jumping around too much from lineup to lineup to formation to formation. We should know who this team is after the break. That's hope. So let's see how that <laughs> works. Um, I'd be happy to see it because uh, there's been some poor games. Yeah. The Open Cup was not one of them. I enjoyed that game. That I, was fun. I had a great time, and, and the, the players that were on the field showed well. They very well did. All right, so the LA Galaxy coming up against Real Salt Lake on a Saturday. Uh, that game, 7.30 p.m. kickoff time. Spectrum Sportsnet, Spectrum Deportes. Don't whine about it not being on ESPN+. Plus. You've been warned, even if you're in Vegas. Apparently, that's a Spectrum area all the way over there. They block those two, so you have nice. you can't watch them on ESPN+. Plus. Have to watch them on Spectrum Sportsnet, so keep your eyes peeled for that game. Hopefully, I'll see everybody out there. You can see me at halftime. I will be there. I will look forward to saying hi to you if you are there. Uh, just let me know on Twitter or hit me up on Instagram or something like that. Once the game starts and I show up, I tend to not check that stuff because my mentions buzz a lot with the news and information. So hit me up beforehand. Let me know. All right. I'll see everybody there. All right. Uh, Anything else? You good? That's good. I I, I will take a, you know, I'll promote Portuguese Heritage Night while I'm here. If you want tickets to Portuguese Heritage Night, you can go to www.legalaxy.com backslash tickets backslash Portugal. We'll be in section 140. You can come say hi uh, to the Portuguese hammer himself. And if, if nothing else, you get a good deal. You get a scarf and a ticket for 25 bucks. You're not going to beat that deal. That's so even if you're not there to support Portuguese Heritage Night, you're not going to find a better deal on tickets. So uh, I'll take a moment to, to pump that up if you're interested and you don't already have tickets to the game. Very good. And tell people where they can find you, too. And they could find me at GIS Hammer on Twitter. You could also hear me on the Guys in Shorts Sports Los Angeles podcast. You could find them on Twitter at Guys in Shorts LA. You could also follow some of our soccer content at GIS Soccer. And I also want to give a little shout out to James Whitlock, who covers the LA Kings on our hockey podcast, Kings Realm. And you can find them at Kings Realm Pod. I met James. He was a good guy. Yeah, good guy. Good guy. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J G U E S M A. And of course, at Galaxy Podcast is where you can find me as well. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com where you can find all of our articles, all of our game previews, our recaps, our podcasts, our vi- video podcasts, all that stuff, including our scarves. And I know some of the people in the chat room were talking about our scarves. You can get our scarf. Uh, they ship out quickly $25. I still have a 
bunch of them here. Let me know. Send it on in. Order it from the website. You can find it there. Cornerofthegalaxy.com forward slash shop. Just click on the shop button. All right. Uh, I think that about does it. Again, Galaxy on Saturday against Real Salt Lake should be an interesting game. We'll see everybody out there at the studio. For Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira, I'm Josh Kessman, and you've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, Goodbye, everybody.